let's start uh, today's session and Saturday in the demo session we have discussed brief things about what is EPM and why uh, any organization need EPM software for their EPM process what is EPM process EPM process includes planning budgeting forecasting and analyzing the reports and taking the decisions based on the reports that's what we discussed and how BPC is going to be helpful for an organization as EPM software that's what we have discussed as part of demo session okay today we are going to see some more details about BPC okay so hope everyone is able to see my screen and uh, my voice is clear to everyone so BPC stands for business planning and consolidation it is a EPM software provided by SAP organization so it combines both planning and consolidation functionalities in a single tool okay so planning covers entire EPM process and consolidation is purely related to finance okay so by using this BPC as EPM software any organization can make better decisions and they can get better collaboration between different departments and they can utilize their resource very efficiently without wasting okay so it helps an organization in the process of planning budgeting forecasting and consolidation so consolidation is nothing but aggregating combining and similar combining multiple similar statements into one statement let's say Amazon is doing business around the globe and in India they have to follow Indian financial rules and in China they have to follow China rules like that but in India they will be generating one balance sheet and China they will be generating another balance sheet like that but finally at headquarter level they will be generating single balance sheet so combining all these things is not easy task manually so that's why business are using BPC for their consolidation purpose we'll be discussing in detail once we are done with the planning part okay so in it helps in the process of these areas and output will be useful in making better decisions and getting collaboration between different departments and utilization of resources efficiently so how it is going to um, help in making better decisions generally uh, for any organization if they start planning let's consider an any US company so generally their uh, calendar year is from January to December so what generally uh, most of the organizations do is they start doing planning for the next year let's say now we are in 2019 and they'll be planning for 2020 and they start in the month of June by end of September or October they'll get consolidated plan data from all the departments from around the globe and they will be submitting that data to higher level management and higher level management will be validating that if they are okay with that they will be approving it otherwise they'll send it back to the lower level departments for modifications so entire cycle so this entire cycle time will be around three to six months time so they'll be busy with their day-to-day -day regular activities and they have to work on this planning also but if they start using BPC as their planning software then we can reduce that planning cycle from three months to three weeks so that they will have a more time and they can come up with multiple planning scenarios okay so by reducing the planning cycles it is going to helpful in making better decisions let's say first they'll come up with some plan and higher level management is not okay with that and they'll send it back again within one two weeks they'll come up with another plan like that within one two months they can have multiple planning scenarios with them and they can choose the better one among those 
planning scenarios okay so if they start using bpc as their planning software then they can get better planning okay so they can make better decisions and collaboration so you'll be able to understand once we discuss this diagram how why we need a collaboration between different departments and utilization of resources efficiently so we can create yes anusha you have any question okay so uh, utilization of resources efficiently so when you have complete details from end to end what is happening and what is going on so in the demo session we have discussed with a simple example of hr hr department so you can easily get the details of whatever we have employees and you can predict the future how many employees we may require what are all the skill set we need and whether do we have a resource on top of that like who can work on those skill set let's uh, say we in future we are expecting more projects on artificial intelligence and data analytics or data science and with the help of a bpc you can easily predict how many employees we may need on top of these skill set and so once you have the data and you can easily take better decisions like whether we can train the existing resource to work on these modules data science and artificial intelligence or do we need to recruit from the university level like from fresh graduates and we need to train so with the help of vpc you can easily understand all these scenarios like if we recruit um, experienced candidates how the cost will be for our organization if you recruit a fresh graduate from the universities you need to spend some time for them like to make them train on this and you need to spend invest some money on training and all so all these possibilities you can analyze and you can take better decisions so you can easily utilize your resource very efficiently with the help of a bpc reports but going forward you will be able to understand very clearly how it is going to be helpful so <clears throat> let's discuss a planning simple planning process how it happens at organization level okay so as you can see on my screen this is a diagram i copied it from sap's website just try to understand so the strategic target let's say in demo session we have discussed like amazon is targeting 100 billion dollars revenue for next five years so that that we call it as a strategic target or a long-term goal okay so once the long-term goal has been set by the higher level management the next department comes into picture is sales department sales department so because sales department only can make the revenue by selling the products or by giving the services offered by organization let's consider amazon so if they want to make 100 billion dollars revenue and they have to sell that many products right to make that revenue so if they want to sell that many products first they need to have a stock with them if they want to have a stock they need to manufacture it so then for manufacturing supply chain department comes into picture if they want to manufacture the goods or products they need to get support from hr department for hr related supply h human human supply labor supply and capex if they want to invest like if they want to buy new missionaries like if they want to um, like establish a new plan new manufacturing plant and all they need a support from capital expenditure department and they need uh, support from finance department for their uh, all expenses and they need support from third party vendors for the raw materials if they want to manufacture goods they need raw material from the other vendors right so all these things so uh, this it is a typical uh, planning process you can see here but in real time in real world there will be so many departments so many other departments will be involving in achieving this 
strategic target that's why i said we need a better collaboration between different departments to achieve the strategic targets set by higher level management in any organization okay in this picture you can see only few um, departments but in real world there will be multiple departments and it is not that much easy to get the collaboration between uh, different departments in achieving the strategic target but with the help of uh, bpc sap bpc you can easily achieve and <clears throat> like how we are going to achieve we'll be discussing in the coming sessions i'll just give you a simple uh, way how it is going to be useful let's say the year we have a sales department and we have supply chain department hr department revenue cost capex departments so we integrate all these departments with our bpc and any department can see their um, like other departments data in real time let's say <laughs> sales is expecting 100 products by end of tomorrow and they can easily see on time in real time what is the stock available in the go down or warehouse and if they see there is a less stock immediately they can check with a manufacturing team that so we can see only 70 in the stock can you please manufacture the remaining 30 by end of tomorrow we may require 100 products like that so we will be integrating all the data with a bpc so that it will be easy to get the collaboration between these departments then only we'll be able to reach the strategic target okay so this is a typical uh, planning process happens at any organization it doesn't matter whether it is a utilities industry or oil and gas industry healthcare industry anything okay so in every organization the planning process will be similar but the planning strategies will be different so healthcare industry will be following some different strategies utilities utilities industry will be following different strategies but the whole epm process like planning budgeting forecasting process will be same okay so this is a planning process this is how it happens at organization level and if you want to do it manually it is highly impossible these days because every organization is almost multinational companies so when you are operating in multiple countries doing manual is not easy task so that's why these days businesses are realizing that what is the necessity of um, epm bpc software and how it is going to change their business and all <clears throat> so you can read the success stories from sap portal like uh, before using bpc as a epm software in an organization after using bpc as epm software so how the business changed how the revenue got increased how the expenses got decreased and all you can easily get the success stories from sap portal okay so this is about a simple planning scenario and let's discuss the bpc technical architecture okay so going forward we'll be discussing these elements okay as i said in 10.1 so the latest version is 11.1 but we'll be discussing 10.1 because 98 percent of the projects are running on 10.1 net viewer so in 10.1 we have two models one is a standard model another one is a embedded model so the right side part you can see so this right side part is a standard model architecture and the left side part is a embedded model architecture first let me explain you the standard model so in this we'll be having one planning model okay we call it as a model if somebody is from bw background you can assume it as a cube real-time info cube if somebody is not from any technical background or it you can just imagine this as a table okay so the blue color one square box is a table okay table and where we can see the data like table is nothing but rows combination of rows and columns so in this table it is a modifiable table you can read the data and you can modify the data okay so both things can happen so this is a one model bpc standard planning model on top of that we'll be creating input forms and reports 
input forms and reports okay so we have two interfaces one is a epm add in excel another one is a epm web interface so for a bpc standard we have two interfaces one is epm add in excel excel interface another one is a browser interface web interface okay so once we start a practical sessions i'll show you how how to access excel interface and how to access epm web interface and we can ha access the this reports by using fury also okay fury also is there so i'll show you at the end of this training sessions how to integrate this epm reports with the fury but these two excel interface and web interface and we'll be having one model so on top of that model we'll be creating input forms and reports for their planning and analysis purpose so by using input forms they'll be saving the planning data by using reports they'll be reading the planning data and reports also so in bpc standard in a single model in a single table we will be having plan data and actual data plan data and actual data because for analysis purpose you need to have both the data right planning uh, data and actual data then only you'll be able to generate the reports and you can analyze the variances between the planned values and actual business okay so everything will be in a single table single cube or we can call it as a single model both the data plan data and actual data will be in the single model okay this is a very simple architecture and the bpc standard one is a very very easy to understand okay simply one model and two interfaces on top of this model you will be creating input forms planning schedules and reports this is about standard model technical architecture and coming to embedded embedded it is more technical so bpc standard even business users can handle so once as a bpc consultant once we configure the solution for the business we'll deliver it to the business and after that they can easily modify the solution okay so it is a more user friendly the bpc standard model so i out of 100 bpc projects 90 projects will be on standard model as of now but going forward for embedded model there is a demand now these days because these days data volumes are increasing more and embedded model will be best suitable for analytics point of view but for planning bpc standard only evergreen it supports more complex planning scenarios and all okay and coming to the embedded model architecture so it is a more technical and it is a combination of bpc standard plus bwip okay bwip ip is another software integrated planning and other name for bwip is pak if bwip is running on top of hana database then there is a option called planning application kit okay so by using planning application kit performance will be more when you compare with bpc standard in embedded model performance will be increased okay there are some other advantages also we'll discuss those things let's try to understand the architecture as i said in standard we have only one model but in embedded we'll be having two okay we'll be having two one is only for plan data to store plan data another one is only to store actual data okay in standard we'll be having only one model and in that we'll have both plan data and actual data but in embedded model we'll be having two cubes okay so we can call it as a cube or info provider or model and all so just remember it as a cube okay real time cube means we can modify the data basic cube means we cannot modify the data that is the difference okay real time cube and basic cube so generally actual data we are not supposed to change right let's say yesterday we were able to um, sell 100 products so we are not supposed to show in the reports like 110 or 120 or 80 right we should show the actual data 
but plan you can have anything let's say you target it for 150 and you can change if you want okay we may sell more products let's make it as a 175 you can do that for a plan data but for actual data you are not supposed to make any changes okay so that's why so we use basic cube to store actual data and real-time cubes to store plan data if you see here the arrow max blue color and green color so green color will be data saving and blue color is data retrieving in the reports okay so we'll be having two cubes one is a real-time cube and the one is a basic cube on top of that we'll be having multi cube so multi cube is a combination of these two cubes okay so cube so if you're not from SAP background just assume it as a tables okay so basic cube means it is a table you cannot modify the data you can just read the data and you can see the data real-time cube means you can read the data and you can modify and save it okay so multi cube is a combination of some fields from real-time info cube and some fields from basic info cube okay so on top of multi cube will be having a concept called aggregation levels will create aggregation levels on top of aggregation levels by using query designer that is another application offered by SAP by using query designer will be creating input forms and reports input ready queries and read queries okay and we will be assigning that queries in SAP analysis office analysis office just like in standard we use EPM Excel here we'll be using AO Excel okay so that is the difference and design studio also we don't do much things in web interface in embedded model we don't do much things in web interface in embedded model so we'll be spending most of the time in BW like there is a application called SAP GUI graphical user interface so by using that we'll be configuring all these things cubes aggregation levels and by using query designer queries and all so finally we'll be assigning these input forms and reports in AO and design studio is another uh, model reporting tool from SAP and again you can do some things in web interface like a business process flows and all so we'll be discussing in the coming sessions what is a BPA of work status and all okay so this is about embedded model the difference between uh, standard model and embedded model are there are some differences for BPC standard we don't require any like HANA database any database can be used for a standard model whereas for embedded HANA database is a mandatory so HANA database is offered by SAP so if you want to use embedded model then you need to have a HANA database but for standard it can run any it can run on any database like SQL any database okay that is the difference and this is user friendly so you will be creating input forms directly in Excel directly in EPM add in Excel so you don't require any other application to create input forms and reports but whereas in embedded you need a query designer okay you need a query designer and all so going forward as part of this training session we'll be discussing this standard model okay so once you are able to understand the standard model then embedded model will be easy to understand because embedded is a combination of a BPC standard plus BWIP so if you want to understand embedded model you need to have a understanding of BW also but whereas for a BPC standard model you don't require any knowledge of BW so minimum knowledge is more than enough that I'll be giving you as part of this training session so so I can see some Rudra can you please go on mute uh, Chappal, sir. yes Satish can you please go on mute I can see some noise from your end so we are recording this session right so if you have any questions we'll discuss after some time uh. thank you 
and so this is about a technical architecture of a BPC standard model and embedded model so going forward once we start discussing in the system you can easily correlate what we are doing what is a model what is EPM add in Excel what is a web interface how we are creating input forms and reports for the planning purpose and all you can easily correlate once we start the practical sessions so this is about 10.1 architecture and the latest version is 11.1 so this is a 11.0 architecture so there is no much difference between 10.1 and 11.0 it will be so in 11.0 also we have a two flavors standard model and an embedded model the only difference is 10.1 can run on 7.3 7.4 7.5 bw versions okay so and demo session i told you bw is a back end for bpc bw is a back end for bpc so for 11.0 the bw version is a different so bw for hana it is a latest base business warehouse software from sap earlier the version was sap bw 7.3 7.4 or 7.5 like that but recently two three years back sap released a uh, new like a next generation business warehouse suit that version name is SAP BW for HANA okay if you want to use a BPC 11.0 then first use any organization has to upgrade their BW system to SAP BW for HANA 11.0 is much more powerful than um, BPC 10.1 but as of now it is a new we have very less very very less number of projects on 11.0 but in technical configuration point of view it is almost similar to 10.1 with a few changes okay there we are having cubes real-time cube basic cube but in 11.0 we will be having advanced DSO ADSO's concept so once you are able to understand the B 10.1 then 11.0 will be almost similar to that only okay the only difference is the backend BW version should be SAP BW for HANA 1.0 SP3 above now the latest version is SAP BW for HANA 2.0 okay so both both are same almost same technical point of view it will be similar just like this only but the backend is changed Okay, that is about 11.0 that is much more powerful because we can integrate a BPC 11.0 with SAP analytics cloud SAC okay so with SAC if we can integrate this then we can see our data in SAP digital boardroom software there are so many other advantages and you can uh, integrate this data with uh, data science and all predictive analytics there are so many possibilities once you upgrade your system to 11.0 but as of now it is a new there are some bugs SAP is resolving all those I'm sure by next year like 2020 end of 2020 so most of the clients would like to move their planning software from 10.1 to 11.0 but as of now most of the clients are on 10.1 only especially on standard model okay so that is about a technical architecture and BPC introduction so and the next thing is we are going to discuss planning terminology so far I am saying okay BPC will be used for planning budgeting forecasting and all so let me give you a, with a simple example let me explain you this planning terminology so forecasting forecasting is nothing but predicting the near future okay current year estimations these days most of the organizations are doing forecasting for the current year let's say now we are in 2019 so now we are in the third quarter third quarter so let's say if business is planning for the next quarter quarter four then we call it as a forecasting near future and the forecasting um, duration time period will be very less from this example you can see easily let's say if you are trying to plan for three months then we can call it as a forecasting for a short term duration duration will be short and it will be a near future only 
so current year estimations will be treated as a forecasting but in technical point of view in technical point of view planning budgeting will be almost same and forecasting also will be similar to planning only but with a few changes okay so while configuring i'll explain you how we are going to configure forecast and planning and budgeting so just remember forecasting means predicting the near future and the duration will be a short term and planning so planning will be maybe for one year next year one complete year so till 2020 if you are trying to predict something then we call it as a planning okay if you see here in this example from january to december if business is planning to like if business is trying to predict then we call it as a planning so if the same solution is used by the budgeting team then we call it as a budgeting there is no much difference between planning and budgeting in technical configuration point of view but in real time and functional point of view there will be difference planning means so let's say I explain you with a simple example. Right? So in, in next five minutes, I'll give you with an example. Okay. So if you are trying to predict for next one year, then we call it as a planning. And if you are trying to predict for next five years, then we call it as a strategic planning. That is a long term planning. So every organization have forecasting, planning and strategic planning also and rolling forecast also so if you are trying to predict for next five years then we call it as a long-term planning or a strategic planning five years or six years or four years or three years also it depends on the organization planning requirement and another thing is <coughs> rolling forecast so rolling forecast what is the difference between forecast and rolling forecast let's see with a simple example so i said forecasting means predicting for next three periods or one quarter two quarter like that so rolling forecast <coughs> rolling forecast is nothing but reviewing and adjustment so what is the reviewing and adjustments let's imagine now we are in the month of january 2019 and we are planning that for april may june will be able to sell 100 products like product a will be able to sell 100 units in april 140 units in may and 130 units in june so this is a forecasting so we are trying to predict for next three months from april to june but once we reach may once we reach May, by the time we'll be completing April. So we targeted to sell 100 units of product A, but we were able to sell only 80. We were able to sell only 80. So we have actual data for April. So the difference between plan, the value and actual value is 20. So what we are doing is we are adjusting this 20 for the remaining two periods. We are adjusting this 20 for the remaining two periods. So the actual target for May was 140, but now it is a 150. And for June it was 130, now it is a 140. But the total target is not changing. Okay, so this is nothing but rolling forecast. So based on the actual data, we are adjusting the next coming periods target okay so first line is forecast okay we just predicted okay we'll be able to send sell 100 units in april 140 units in may 130 units in june but once we are in the month of may we have actual data for 2019.04 april so and we were able to make only 80 and the difference is 20 and we are adjusting that for the remaining two periods because our target for quarter two by end of quarter two we should be able to sell 370 units of product a that is our target so that's why we are adjusting these two targets may and june okay so rolling forecast is nothing but reviewing and adjusting reviewing and adjusting this is a rolling forecast okay hope you were able to understand with this example what is a rolling forecast 
and next thing is budgeting as said so <coughs> in um, technical configuration point of view budgeting and planning will be same but in functional in business how they are going to use is a different if budgeting team is using this application then we call it as a budgeting is going on if planning team is using the same solution then we call it as a planning is going on okay bottom up and top down so let's imagine there is an organization and the headquarter is in delhi and uh, south region headquarter is in chennai and north region headquarter is in like kolkata okay under chennai we have hyderabad and bangalore and under this kolkata mumbai and noida is there okay so every branch let's imagine these are the branches okay every branch needs some amount some fund to perform their daily activities so hyderabad is expecting 7000 maybe let's imagine as a dollar 7000 dollars for their operations and bangalore is expecting 12000 chennai is expecting 25000 dollars same similar way the red color red color figures are expected values so these are getting moved to higher level like till delhi so hyderabad will be sending we are expecting 7000 chennai will be sending 25000 as an expectation from delhi office okay it is data is moving from lower level to higher level so that we call it as a bottom up planning that we call it as a bottom-up planning but once Delhi received all the data from the lower levels and let's say the expectation is a $75,000 expectation is a $75,000 $75, but in Delhi at headquarter level they have only $65,000 $65, with them only 65 dollars with them so what they do they'll be giving back only less so chennai was expecting 25 thousand dollars but delhi is offering only 23 thousand dollars for hyderabad six thousand for bangalore eleven thousand okay so when the data is moving from delhi to this lower levels then we call it as a top-down budgeting so in real time planning happens from lower level to higher level budgeting happens from higher level to lower level okay so expectations will be moving from lower level to higher level then we call it as a bottom-up planning and the actual things happens budgeting will happen from higher level to lower level top-down budgeting if you consider our Indian budget also central government will be giving something but state governments will be sending some expectations but central government will be giving whatever they have and whatever they can offer okay so if the data is moving from lower level to higher level we call it as a bottom-up planning if data is moving from higher level to lower level then we call it as a top-down planning or budgeting okay so this is about bottom-up and top-down so both the scenarios will be supported by BPC bottom-up and top-down both the things will be supported by BPC this is about the planning terminology forecasting planning strategic planning rolling forecast and budgeting top-down and bottom-up okay this is about <coughs> planning terminology and just to give you a simple uh, overview of a consolidation as I said combining multiple similar financial statements into one financial statement at a group level so if somebody is from finance background they can easily understand what is the group level and all but it doesn't matter as a BPC consultant we don't need to ha understand all these things but technically we need to understand I'm going to explain you what are all those things so just with this example let's say there is a company and in that company they have different different groups let's say Amazon so Amazon global will be one company Amazon India is another company so Amazon China is another company Amazon uh, Japan is another company so Amazon China India Japan will be falling under Amazon Asia region okay that, that structure will be maintained at organization level let's simple imagine this let's say europe region europe region entities are 
Europe region companies are under Europe group and uh, currencies will be different different currencies like uh, in UK the currency will be different and Germany and Japan uh, like Paris okay Italy so they might be using different different currencies but at group level they will be using one currency at headquarter level let's say if it is Amazon they follow USDs at headquarter level they see every report in USDs okay so by using consolidation functionality offered by BPC we can easily transfer the currencies from INR to USD or EU or euros to USD like different different if it is a Middle East then AD Arab dirhams and all we can easily convert all those things into another currencies okay so this uh, entire process if you want to do it manually it is difficult and there is a chance of errors also with the help of this BPC consolidation functionality it is very simple to do all this exercises so after completion of a planning we'll be discussing this consolidation so whenever you're talking about financial statements three things comes into picture one is a balance sheet another one is a profit and loss and the last one is a cash flow okay these three statements will be preparing these three statements based on the configuration in the system okay so this is what uh, I planned for today's session so we have discussed why uh, we need a BPC and how it is going to be helpful for an organization in making better decisions and utilizing the resource efficiently and where it is going to be helpful for the business and we have discussed a simple planning process with a typical this diagram and then we have discussed technical architecture of standard model and embedded model and then we have discussed 11.0 architecture then we have discussed planning terminology so what is a forecasting what is a planning strategic planning budgeting rolling forecast top-down bottom-up planning scenarios okay that's all from my end for today's session and tomorrow we'll be starting the BPC technical things okay tomorrow we'll be discussing BPC terminology so anyone have any questions from today's session Uh, yes, Naveen. Hi, Mahendra. Uh, for, uh, for embedded, you are mandatory. Without HANA, can't we go for embedded? No, no. HANA database is a mandatory for embedded. If I don't have HANA, I cannot make a embedded model. Huh, correct. If you want to use uh, embedded uh, BPC, then it should be running on top mm -hmm. of HANA database that BW will. Okay, because presently we have uh, BC, we are using mostly standard model only. I, we want to use uh, embedded also, okay. but we don't have HANA. So, mm. so can't I use uh, embedded model? No, if you want to use embedded, then uh, BW should run on top of HANA database. Okay. So that is a prerequisite. So you can see on my screen, I said embedded uh, is a combination of standard plus BWIP. So uh, it is a PAK planning okay, application yeah. kit. You can enable PAK only if you are running on top of HANA database. Otherwise, you can use BWIP. That, so, is, yeah. that is another software, only BWIP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can run on any database. But if you want to use BPC embedded model, then it is a mandatory HANA database. Okay. So as part of our sessions, hmm. we will be creating some embedded models also or no? Uh, no, as part of this training, we'll be uh, discussing standard model, Naveen. Yeah, yeah, you told. But uh, can we create at least for the, uh, for comfort purpose, uh, can we create a few embedded models? If you want, we can, but at the end of this uh, standard uh, model training, 
Uh, if you want i can yeah 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 so yeah. you after standard uh, yeah so if you want to create embedded model first you need to have all this set up like you need to have a cubes multi cubes these days we are using as a composite providers we are not using multiple providers mp and once we are done with all this setup then we can create uh, embedded model so in standard how it goes is from environment then model like that but in embedded everything will be done in sap gui at the end will be using bpc i'll show you if you if anyone is interested at the end of this training i'll show you how to create embedded models okay yeah. any other questions from anyone okay so i'll be uh, sharing this um, recording session with you after some time uh, can uh, everyone please uh, and also mahendra one please. more thing is uh, oh, again sometimes the voice is uh, breaking like in the initial okay from I'm not sure uh, okay, okay. some yeah it's like 30 seconds it's coming and then around uh, 5 seconds i am not able to hear anything then it is again coming like every 30 seconds uh, i am getting some disturbance is it uh, is it with everyone not sure i am not sure yeah okay can any other people confirm is it with everyone okay navin uh, i'll check uh, with uh, like nbit team so i'll connect with nbit team and uh, i'll check with them how it is going on and i'll make sure that tomorrow you'll not have that issue yes please yeah even even during the demo session also i experienced similar thing yeah, like every 10 second 20 seconds not here i wasn't traveling so that's why i faced some issue that time I okay. was in the okay. airport. Yeah, can you please check with them? Yeah. Session. Uh -huh. But from today onwards, uh, there uh -huh. will not be any issues. I have a proper internet connection also. Mm, but again, I'll check. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if somebody is not given your email IDs to NBIT's team, please give so that I'll be able to share this recording session with you. Or you can type your email IDs in the chat window okay thank you everyone have a nice day see you on tomorrow at same time